Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Let's get into some LSU football. Brian Kelly spoke with the media yesterday. We talked about a couple of his comments yesterday on yesterday's show, specifically with Kevin Peoples and his impact. I had some injury updates as well. Um, but I wanted to get a little deeper, and we actually have the sound today. We did not yesterday. Um, so I want to talk a little defensive backs. I think um, I've gotten some response via Twitter, via social media, um, on my comments earlier this week about the LSU defensive backs, and I just kind of want to continue that conversation. I think it's going to be very, very important. I am feel good about where LSU is on the offensive side of the ball. Um, I, I don't know that I would toss the word elite around right now, but I feel like the pieces are there, and I trust that coaching staff. I'm seeing some things on, from the defensive front that I like, and I've been pretty bullish on the linebackers since the start of camp. It's the DBs that I'm looking to see more and more out of every time we go out there, and I think Brian Kelly kind of feels the same way, and, and he talked about what he needs to see from these corners. We haven't put up a depth chart, really. You know, we're rolling out different guys, and I think Corey's looking for the same thing that I'm looking for. Who, who's able to stack days together consistently, you know, instead of, well, I had a good day today, but I didn't have such a good day yesterday. We just need to be more consistent. I think it's just this group now, is it's about, this is probably not a great analogy, but, you know, we're getting close to, like, moving day, like in golf. Like, these guys need to understand that over the next few days – this is where, you know, we need to see who are those guys that can stack days together. And Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's kind of moving day for us. We need, we need to see those guys that are going to stack days together. There's a lot in that bite. And shout out to T-Bob for nailing the moving day analogy this morning on the morning show. Hester didn't even give it a shot. Got, they're not golf guys. And T-Bob absolutely nailed it. It is time because when they report to practice on Monday, like you start going at USC. Like that is two weeks out from game day. That is time to start preparing. Right now, people are trying to win jobs. Monday, they start kind of game planning. And so if you want to be part of that game plan, it's time to go this weekend. They're going to have a, a, a scrimmage type situation this weekend. Media's locked out. Like they're going to get they're going to get into it this weekend. And it's time for some of those cornerbacks, as he said, to start stacking days. I'd like to see them stack reps, quite frankly. Um, there have been days where I didn't think they stacked any reps, but there have been days where they've been better. And you you figured as of probably August 1st when they reported to camp, that Zy Alexander and Ashton Stamps were probably the two guys who were going to be the corners. Well, we got out there on August 1st, and Zy Alexander had a big old brace on his knee, and he wasn't doing much. And they've eased him back in, but he's still not a full go by my eye. But Brian Kelly talked to what he's seen from Zy Alexander through these two and a half weeks. Alexander, I think, is getting better by the day. I, I think it's just a matter of just he just needs more reps and more confidence. You know, coming back off of an ACL at that position is probably, if not the most difficult, I, th I think it's probably the most difficult position with, you know, the change of direction, plant, drive, all those things. He's a different player than he was the first day out here. I think there's a lot more confidence. So he'll keep getting better. Look, I'm not an orthopedic. Uh, I, I don't have a very... Um... <laughs> reputable medical opinion, but I would suggest like with the issue with the ACL and the planning and the cutting corner and running back where you plant cut and you get tackled. Um, those are probably two of the most difficult positions to come back and feel comfortable and confident doing your thing. And they're easing Zy back day after day, but you're, you're getting close to two weeks to game time. It's time to, to let it roll. Stance is the guy on the other side. And I have for the entirety of camp said, he's probably the guy who's the number one corner at this point. And so what do you need to see from, from him in terms of man coverage? You ask any corner, they all want to play man. There's not a corner that wants to play, you know, zone coverage. They think they're the best at, at that. And that's good, right? I mean, they, you, you want that kind of mentality. But, you know, defended balls, uh, pass breakups, um, his numbers were best in camp. So, you know, I think he feels comfortable being out there. He's moving well. He's, he's pain-free. You know, he, he had some nagging injuries last year. So I just think he feels confident out there. Uh, he's stronger. He's had a real good year in the weight room. And I think his confidence is high that he can play in the SEC against the very best because he goes against them every day. There are some guys on this roster throughout the entirety of the roster that I will evaluate them based on body of work in the past more so than what I see over an hour and 15 minutes at practice. Ashton Stamps doesn't fit into that bucket because he was asked to go out there and play play corner in the SEC as a true freshman who was kind of under-recruited. Like, that's a really tough way 
to get introduced to college football. Now, if you've been out there for three years and I've seen a sample size, I'm probably going to cling to that a little bit. Talking about three months as a freshman where you're dealing with some injuries, I'm not holding that against Ashton Stamps. And I think he's a good player. I, I clearly think he's been the best corner in the media periods. And Brian Kelly says when they chart it, he's looked the best. I just don't know if Ashton Stamps is, is a number one corner right now. I really much hope to be proven wrong. Again, this is not a shot at Ashton Stamps at all. It's the opposite. He's he's the best corner they got. I just don't know if that is all-American caliber play at this point. He's got to continue to get better and better and better. That's that's for sure. Uh, Kelly spoke to the entirety of the defense and kind of working on on details. I think it's much more about the finer details. Blake brings a lot of energy and enthusiasm to the group. But having said that, you know, we're still work in progress when it comes to the finer details. And I think Blake would tell you if he was standing here right now, it's about getting lined up. It's about the fundamentals. It's about making sure that we're communicating effectively. And, you know, we don't want to mistake activity for achievement. We really have to get that from our group. And so we're demanding the right things. We're asking for the right things from our players. We're certainly getting upticks in performances from players across the board, but as a unit, 11 together, that's the next thing that we've got to see uh, an improvement in. When you are at this point where LSU's defense is, and we all know what we saw last year, you, you understand that. When you are at this point, and you're trying to get back to respectability before you get back to dominance, the first step there is making sure you're in the right place. And that's what he's talking about from a detail perspective. They're going to miss some tackles. They're going to misplay the football on on an out route. There are going to be situations where you might jump off sides or commit a defensive holding trying to cover a really good USC or Ole Miss receiver. Like That stuff is just going to happen. You don't have to bust two coverages every game. You don't have to grossly misfit a run every drive. The first step here is getting in the right place. And once you're in the right place, you can start making plays. But to get to respectability, that's what he's talking about. We've got to get the details right. We've got to communicate pre-snap. We have to understand the assignment, and we have to be in the right place to start to try to make the play. That's my hope that their first step comes there. And quite frankly, Lincoln Riley's not the first guy I'd want to go up against when that's the first thing you're trying to do because he's pretty good at putting points on the board. But those are the cards you're dealt, so you got to go play them. Um, the corners we know are, are in flux. You're dealing with some younger guys. You're dealing with some guys coming off of injury. You're dealing with some guys who are cross-training corner and safety. Um, but safety is another piece to this puzzle, and that's been a pretty consistent mix to this point with Major Burns going down to star and then Jordan Gilbert and Jordan Allen playing the majority of the safety reps for LSU when he talked about their, their development. We've got to continue to stress them in tackling. That's really going to be a, a big piece for us is can we erase uh, some mistakes up front? And when we say mistakes up front, if we if we cut a gap loose, if, if there's an issue up front relative to a run fit, can those safeties erase for us? And we're not there yet. We need to continue to evaluate that. You know, we've got a young group that we're trying to get as many reps uh, back there as well with uh, – you know, the veteran guys out there, Jordan and, and uh, Jordan, those guys are doing a really nice job, but we got to continue to get the young guys some reps as well. That will be the next stage for us in the development of the safeties. He's talking about Deshaun Spears. I, I think. Kylan Jackson's a very promising player as well, and he's got a year on him, but I think Deshaun Spears looks like the next dude. And Jordan Gilbert... Had a nice go of it early in his career at Texas A&M. He's a veteran. He's played in the SEC. He knows what to expect. And we haven't seen a lot of Jordan Allen, um, but that's the guy they trust right now to go back there. Wouldn't surprise me if mm, late October, mid-November, you saw Deshaun Spears start to play more snaps. Maybe in the Nichols game, you see him a lot in the second half. Maybe you can put South Carolina away. I know it's asking a lot on the road, but maybe and he can get back out there. I'm not asking him to play against USC. I'm not asking him to go out there and defend Lane Kiffin's offense. Those are pretty early games. But by the time you get to the back end of the schedule, maybe Texas A&M, maybe Alabama, maybe by the time you get to Arkansas, he's potentially a guy to look for that could be, could be in the mix. 
But what the safety's got to do, he's talking about get up there and, and clean up some mistakes. They've also got to communicate. You know, I think we've done a pretty good job relative to the communication. That was going in something that we were concerned about. I think that's been a piece that, that I think has been really, from my end, a pleasant surprise. We've gotten good communication. Uh, we're not in a position where we feel like uh, we're not getting the right calls and executing the right coverages and, you know, uh, obviously uh, coverage fits back there. So that's good. One day I hope that they get their feet wet against Nichols before they go play USC, but that's not the card LSU has has played the last four years. They've played Mike Leach, they've played Mike Norvell, and now they're going to go play Lincoln Riley. There's no figure this out when you get there. You've got to figure it out now. Communication, lining up, and understanding where you're supposed to be, it's paramount. And I'm happy that Brian Kelly is talking about the fact that he's been pleasantly surprised because you just heard him in the previous fight say that we're not there in terms of the safety's cleaning everything up. In the bite before that, you heard him say, you know, we need cornerbacks to start having consistent weeks instead of one day off, one day on. So he's being candid that some stuff is is good, some stuff is not. And he likes where the communication is. And like I just said, that's step one. So that's an encouraging thing. I thought the defensive back portion of Brian Kelly's uh, talk yesterday was probably the most interesting we wanted to get that sound to you, so if you look uh, if you just dropped in the car and missed a little bit of it of the uh, Brian Kelly sound, you can catch it on demand. Hunt on LSU on YouTube or wherever you find your sound uh, on on the audio side of things. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors: hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.